Welcome back to the last section in this title. And this section is going to be, well, its main topic will be manipulating the canvas itself. That's going to be the thematic topic hidden behind. What are we going to do in this section? In this section, we'll learn how to work with text, something we avoided throughout this title. We're going to learn about pixel manipulation by revisiting images and seeing how to manipulate them. We're going to also look at how to clip art, which is really, really cool and advanced and not supported in all browsers currently while this recording is being made. We're going to also look at how to transform the canvas itself, which is kind of complicated, but don't worry, that's what you have me. And we'll finish up with scaling, rotating, and translating the full canvas itself. So let's jump right into our first lecture, which is working with text. And through it, we'll learn how to add text into our canvas. We'll see our main text capabilities in Canvas, and we're also going to leverage the knowledge that we could fetch from Canvas about the size of our text to position and size our text element within. So let's jump right into it. After all the complicated things we've been through throughout the last few sections, it's time for us to focus on some simple things but really important, and that's text. What I want to do is I'm going to create here a copy. In this case, this is my Twitter um, account name, and you're welcome to follow me on Twitter at zero to geek. Now, I want to show you how to create this type of copy. It is really not that complicated, but there's some steps involved into integrating copy into Canvas. So let's go ahead and get started. And I went ahead already and created the create filtered text function and pre-configured our normal variables as we have throughout the lectures. And I'm going to go right ahead. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to my context and I'm going to just go straight ahead and stroke text. And I'm going to put inside whatever text I want. And let me go ahead and just create a helper variable because I'm going to use it a couple of times. And I'm going to call this just text. And I'm going to set it to be at zero to geek. Beautiful. So let me send that text in as the first parameter. The second parameter is going to be the location or position where I want my text to be. For now, let me just set it at 50 50. I'm going to go ahead and save this and run my application. Now, by default, we're going to have a certain font size and we're going to have a certain color. The content stroke text is not a function. That's because I have here a slight typo. And let me go ahead and fix that stroke text. And this is not context context. That's that's good. Let's give it another shot. Click our refresh. And here we go. So our text is already in, but obviously it's not the size we wanted it to be. The next step that we really want to do is we want to go to our text and say to it, hey, by the way, the font that we want to use, and we're going to set that with the font parameter. Well, we kind of want it to be 40 pixels, maybe. And we want it to be a type of font of a serif. Now, in Canvas, you do not embed fonts. So if you wanted to embed fonts, you have to approach CSS, embed the fonts, and then work with those embedded fonts. In this case, I'm going to whatever font the user has. And I'm saying that I want to type a serif font, which is 40 pixels. I don't know which font exactly is going to be used because that's going to be based on the user's computer and not my own inclination. Now, besides stroke text, there's also another function very similar, similar to everything that we've done previously, which is called fill text, which will actually fill the text out. And again, so far, we didn't configure our colors and we didn't configure anything really specifically to the font besides its size and its type. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a few more things because really in general, most of the things that you would do with fonts is the same as you would do with any other item besides defining your text alignment. Right now our text alignment, and I'm going to go ahead here and also very quickly just go to my width divide two and my height divide by two, width divided by two, height divided by two. And I'm also going to go ahead here and subtract maybe four pixels to create that overlay effect that we were having before when you were looking at me before earlier. And you'll see that now we'll have your the text and it's going to have a relatively ugly overlay right now, but that's fine. We could change the colors if we wanted to, but I'm going to keep it this way for now. Notice that what happened when I set my text align to nothing, it kind of changed our layout a bit, but I'm also, I'm going to go ahead here and set it to be center. There's left, right, center. I don't remember all by heart, but just go into the documentation, which I'll provide inside of your source files and just go ahead there and look at all the different options to your text align. So I'm going to go ahead here and save that click here on refresh. And now our content, our X, Y coordinates would be in the center point. Beyond defining that, I could also define the center point of the text itself. Do we want it to be on the top? Do we want it to be on the bottom? Do we want it to be in the center? To do that, I'm going to use the text baseline. 
and I'm going to go ahead and set it to be in the top. And what that means is that our coordinate, notice how where we are right now. And when I click here on refresh, and notice how this is above the center. So our, cent our, our point of our line starts here. You could say your Y coordinate, your zero, your point where our item is actually being positioned is somewhere right here. But by changing that configuration, you'll see that the copy is now going to go to the bottom. I could have set it to be in the center as well. So again, look into the documentation to see all the different various options that you could do. And that's really all that I wanted to talk about when it comes to text. But I just want to do one more thing before we wrap things up. Now, I really want to size my text to fit the whole canvas or almost all the canvas. But because I don't know what font is going to be used in the end, I don't know what size the font needs to be for that to work. To be able to to control that and to configure that, I'm going to go ahead and create here some a little bit uh, probably not the best logic in the world, although it's not that far from being the best logic. I'm going to set here a variable that will be defined as let's say 48 in the beginning. And then I'm going to go ahead and create here a loop that will run no matter what. And I'm going to ask while our width of our text is smaller than the size of our screen. So I, I'm going to need also a text box. And the text box is literally is something I could get from my con context and I could ask for it to define for me the size of the text if I would ha put text inside by calling the measure text function and sending into it the text that I want to write. Once I've done that, the text box is going to have two properties of width and height that I could then use to, to decide is it a good spot or not. So I'm going to go ahead here and what I want to do is I'm going to also take this context to define the size of our font because we need to know the size and I'm going to go ahead and dynamically change the size each time the, the loop goes through and then defining the size. I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade the size each time as I'm not going to use it again afterwards. I'm fine with leaving this the way it is or if I wanted to I could have gone here and set it up here and then started at maybe 47 if I decided to start at 47. And I'm going to go ahead for my while here. And what is the logic here? I want to ask if my T box width is smaller than our width times dot nine. Now notice the problem here. The problem here is that it's going to go one beyond that. So if I wanted to change my logic in any certain way, maybe I would do my while but really the point of here is just to show that we're going to dynamically find our size that we're lot that we're happy with. So I'm going to set that size here, which is size minus one, or it's actually the size itself. Fair enough. Once I got my size, I'm going to go ahead here and save this and just go ahead into and click here on refresh. Oh, and also make sure no, all the rest seems fine. And I'm going to go ahead here and click here on refresh. And now my copy itself, if I don't have your uh, error, which is console, console, save, refresh. In this lesson, we really learned everything we need to know about text in Canvas.